Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's episode of the Tech Talk with me, Kazim. Uh, on today's episode of the Tech Talk, uh, we're going to be discussing securing cloud access with Azure Active Directory. And yeah, I've got Dwayne Natwick on the show with me today. Hi, Dwayne, and uh, welcome to the Tech Talk show. Hi, hi, Kazim. Thank you very much for having me. I think we should start off with an introduction. Do you mind to tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dwayne Natwick. I am a senior product manager for CloudReach, who is a multi-cloud Microsoft, uh, AWS, and uh, and Google uh, partner, uh, expert level Microsoft MSP. Uh, we do a lot of Azure. Uh, I also do a lot of content uh, content writing, training. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, Azure MVP, and recently, uh, recently published a, uh, a prep, uh, preparation exam guide for the SC, SC 300, uh, identity and access management exam from Microsoft. First, I want us to, uh, lay out some foundations, right? So just so uh, anyone new to Azure Active Directory watching this later now can follow through. So uh, before we get into the security aspect of things, can you help us define what Azure Active Directory is? And uh, can you also point us to where we can see some of the Azure Active Directory already in use? Yeah, so Azure Active Directory, so just to kind of, just kind of level set. So, you know, with the onset of cloud cloud applications cloud services uh you know we moved from you know a traditional uh you know a traditional legacy authentication which was you know authentication was built into the applications and uh and there was an app there was a user database that uh that developers would put into those applications and they would manage per application the database the onset of cloud, obviously, we have, you know, we use our email address and passwords to get into, you know, Twitter, to LinkedIn, to, uh, to shopping sites uh, all day, every day. And what we do to do that is we use modern authentication. So we use an identity provider, essentially, of some kind uh, to, uh, that is, that is handling that authentication. And then, and then the, then the, uh, the partnership or uh, or federation federated trust between that application, whether you know whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, is is using that identity provider to authorize and verify that person is who they are. Um, what Azure Active Directory is is Microsoft's identity provider uh, within their cloud services. It is used. If you create an Outlook.com account, uh, you create a Microsoft 365 subscription, you get on Azure, you use Dynamics 365, you use Power BI, you use uh, you know, Power Apps. Um, all of those services utilize Azure Active Directory, as well as if you ever go into another account and uh, and it says use your Microsoft account, and you choose you choose your Microsoft account. You're again using Azure Active Directory as that identity provider. So, so that's really what, uh, and that's giving us access. It's verifying who we are. Then we can utilize all those tools uh, within Azure Active Directory for multi-factor authentication and all that to to secure our identities. Another concept that I would like us to get clarity on is the idea of access management so what is access management and how does it really work yeah so so you know there are, you know you have when you go to get onto a you know a application or a platform you need to verify who you are and so uh and so access management and uh, identity and access management as you go along is the is that process of okay, you are uh, you are uh, authenticating, which is verifying who you are. You're then authorized being authorized for what you have access to, 
Uh, and so that's really the access management piece uh, is the authorization. And so, you know, as a as an administrator of identity and access management, you are you are looking at the applications you're looking at the user and groups users and groups within your organization or or uh, or company or what your customer base is and then what they're going to have authorization to access at. and hopefully you know what you're thinking about when you're planning and determining that is is looking at a principle of least privilege so that any user has access only to those applications and resources that they need to perform their job or for a customer only what they need access to to purchase goods and services and and check out uh, and they do not have any privileges beyond that uh, because then we get into you know potential uh, increasing potentially increasing our attack surface and causing uh, causing a potential issue uh, of somebody uh, somebody hacking into our environment and causing problems let's delve into the meat of today's topic uh, securing cloud access uh, what are some of those top attacks uh, against azure active directory and uh, what tools do we have on azure right that can help us protect um, our users and credentials against some of these attacks yep generally generally the kind you know generally what we see in terms of of identity types of attacks are, you know, it, I'm sure everybody understands phishing attacks to a degree and understands what, uh, you know, that you get emails that are sent to you that are, uh, are from, you know, that look like they're from reputable sources. You know, you have the phishing attacks, like somebody's sending you something from a shopping site that you've done and they've, they've actually put the logo and everything like that. But generally there's usually something kind of, uh, kind of a miss, uh, somewhere something's misspelled usually uh, if you uh, hover over the email address it's wrong but those are common attacks they're gonna they're gonna direct you to a link and want you to put in some kind of personal information that's ultimately going to be used for uh, you know for uh, for possibly authentication you know reset your you know get something from your then there's spear phishing attacks that might be that look like they're coming from your uh, your actual company, uh, like your company IT. Hey, you need to reset your password. Please put your, click this link and put your password in. Um, those are very common attacks, uh, you know, social engineering type attacks to try and, uh, and gain access to your resources. Uh, there's also brute force attacks where, uh, or uh, password based attacks where, uh, where they create a bot and just start sending commonly used passwords and trying to uh, to authenticate and log you in and a lot you know and uh, azure active directory has a lot of those has a lot of parameters that you can set uh to protect yourself against that they have azure uh, active directory password protection where it protects against those brute force attacks by by banning certain passwords so users can't create can't use those passwords as well as as setting setting lockout parameters that if if somebody fails 10 times within a minute that account's going to be locked out um and that can all be tied into uh, to both your your cloud uh your cloud identity of azure active directory as well as uh if you have on-premises active directory uh you can use that uh, other ways to protect against those kind of attacks is using multi-factor authentication multi-factor every uh, every person and organization should be using on your personal accounts and your business accounts, multi-factor authentication, where then you need to have, you know, some level of biometrics or, or something you have like a, uh, a code that's sent to an authenticator app on your phone that is going to uh, verify that you are who you say you are. And that's really key because that protects you against those passwords being guessed and passwords are, uh, are typically, uh, typically very, uh, you know, we try and remember our passwords, you know, not everybody wants to use a password generator all the time. Uh, and they want to re remember their passwords and we want to, uh, you know, and that makes generally them easy to guess. So, uh, you know, 80, I think 80 to 90% of, of, of successful attacks on a, an environment have to do with some level of username and password uh, indiscretion. And so, uh, so those are ways, you know, multi-factor authentication protects us, uh, you know, 
very close to 100% from, from any kind of those brute force uh, dictionary or phishing types of attacks, because if somebody does gain your credentials, you're going to have to verify that that is, uh, is proper and that, that that is an actual verification of your identity. Uh, conditional access is another piece uh, that helps protect within Azure Active Directory, where based on certain, certain types of conditions and parameters, uh, it might trigger additional verification either through a you know multi-factor authentication or uh, might block access if it's a if it's a risky user if it's been identified as a as a potential uh, a potential anonymous IP address so those are all things that are used to protect us against these kind of identity based attacks uh, you mentioned conditional access so let's let's touch on conditional access just a little bit um, what are the different scenarios that uh, explains how conditional access works and, uh, you know, maybe how to use conditional access as well? Yeah, conditional access to a degree takes multi-factor authentication kind of to a next level and uh, it can it can help to, you know, if somebody, if people are not super excited about utilizing multi-factor authentication you want to allow them to of to uh to bypass multi-factor authentication at certain times you know if they you know especially if they're on their if they're on the same ip address every day uh you know that's home office and we're not worried about or main office and we're not worried about their identities being compromised uh we can you know we don't need to enforce multi-factor authentication every day but if they move, you know. Say they go to a public place. They go to a Starbucks, and they uh, and they go to log into uh, a particular application. Maybe it's your uh, maybe it's your application that is your line of business application that's got all your customer data. It's got all your uh, got all your all your information around customers and their their payment uh, their payment plan plans and uh, and their addresses and things like that. And we're in a public. Uh, unsecure, insecure uh, wireless network, uh, we could trigger then additional verification that they are who they are. Or we, if, if it's that sensitive, say it's you know an HR system that the HR managers accessing from a public place that we don't want anything to leak out, we could block that. Uh, conditional access can block access to that application until they get onto a known trusted network. And so it gives a lot of flexibility there um, of, you know, if a user is at risk or if it's a, a tag dangerous IP address or dangerous ge geographic location, you know, from Microsoft's threat intelligence, we can block that access. Uh, if it's a, if, if we manage our devices within tune and maybe that, uh, that device is showing non-compliant because it's not up to date on its malware protection. We can block that access, or we can uh, we can also enforce other things. Uh, you know, uh, enforce that uh, that compliance. We can enforce multi-factor authentication. We can require password resets with multi-factor authentication. So it's a very powerful tool from a standpoint of providing additional flexibility. Uh, to how users interact with different applications. And again, really decreasing that attack surface and, and avoiding potential issues uh, as an identity and access uh, uh, administrator uh, to you know kind of help us sleep at night. Is there a quick demo that you want to show us to help us connect the dots with some of those things we're seeing? Yeah, sure. All right, so, um, so if I go into... Um, Azure Active Directory. Here's here's my Azure Active Directory here. Uh, you know, I have all my users and groups. Uh, and then if I, you know, go down, uh, go down further into, we got our company branding. We've got password resets in here. Uh, we've got identity governance. Uh, we didn't talk about things like privileged identity management and other things like that, but those are other ways to protect our environment. Uh, if I go uh, to go to uh, identity protection this views uh, this is a dashboard that helps to look at you know any kind of risky users or risky sign-ins which are one of those triggers for conditional access policies uh, if I go to identity actually I want to go to password go 
to password protection, this is where those lockout thresholds are. So I can set those lockout thresholds. Microsoft already has a banned list of, pa list of passwords. I can enforce a custom list if I want to as well. And if I go now to conditional access, which is the fun one here, we have these policies here where we can set, we can set up policies. And if I go here from trusted location, I have a condition here that based on based on my main office or my trusted my company headquarters, uh, I'm going to uh, going to have a level of control uh, and allow uh, allow access to cloud apps. But we can also block access or we can require all of these things over here uh, to take place. You know, or we can do select one and so, or we can select multiple ones and then we can require all selected controls or require one of of any of those so it's a lot of flexibility there um, uh, from that standpoint uh, i'm not going to change anything on this right now uh, but if i go also to conditional access now we want to know you know we i, I have these set to report only uh, we want to make sure that the, these react the way that we want them to and one of the most, one of real powerful tool within here is the what if so we can go in here I can select, I'll select myself as, uh, as the user here. And I can then go down here to what if, and I can then see after a moment down here, it's going to show what policies apply and what policies do not apply. And you can see no policies applied with that. Now, if I go back here and I select a specific application, like Office 365, which I know Office 365 is the is one that I have selected, and say I select Android as a platform uh, for the device, and I do what if. All right. So I've got a, what I'm seeing here is I've got a problem with my policy because what should be taking place is that I am using an Android device. Uh, so the policy that should be applying is this deny access to Android devices. And so I've got a conditional access policy and it should be blocking access. So I need to do a little bit of digging here. Oh, that's why. All right. And there's my problem. I found my problem. All right, let's go back now. And now if I do what if, now you can see that policy took place. I, For some reason, I eliminated any users in my conditional access policy. So, so right there, I kind of showed during the demo exactly one of the key helpful hints with the what if policy. You can see and kind of troubleshoot if you've got any problems with your policy, if it's not acting right in what if before you deploy it. If you if you like what it what's taking place and say okay it's doing right because this user uh this user is trying to access office 365 from an android device and we have the deny access from android devices it's the policies applied it's working correctly so i can select this policy now and i can turn it on if i want and i'm ready to go so uh so very powerful from a conditional access standpoint to test your policies before you put them in place you might have noticed real quick i was moving kind of quick though um because my uh my main account is the global administrator uh my selecting of all users gave me a warning of don't get yourself locked out because i was signed in on that account uh to uh and i can then exclude certain people you know if i want to exclude people in my it department you know so that they don't get locked out of something uh, there is a there are exclusions that you can put in when you set up your users uh, in there. So, so those are all things. But just because I do these on report only, I don't worry about it too much. Uh, but uh, uh, this is you know my demo tenant tenant. But if you're doing it yourself, make sure you're uh, make sure you're not locking yourself out. But Microsoft puts Microsoft's very helpful putting those best practice parameters and warnings around things so that you don't misstep sometimes. Uh, just before we wrap up, right? So I'd like us to touch on just one more thing, uh, which is the difference between Azure Active Directory, ADDS, and Azure ADDS. Because some people, uh, you know, have this uh, notion that 
uh, Azure AD is more of ADDS that runs on an Azure VM, yeah. right? So, yeah. so do, do you want to do you want to help us run through the difference between these three? I'll I'll, I'll try I'll try and do my fifty thousand foot view because <laughs> generally I, I'll spend I'll spend half an hour <laughs> half an hour in classes talking about this. So as as I stated at the beginning, Azure Active Directory is modern authentication and Microsoft's identity provider. Azure Active Directory is much more like, uh, you know, it's a much flatter structure. It's users, it's groups, it's devices, uh, and m is much more like a cloud identity service, like you would see when you create a login for LinkedIn or Facebook or even like Google, than it really is to ADDS, which is Active Directory Domain Services. Active Directory Domain Services is on premise, is generally your on premises. Uh, what you usually, if you have a Windows environment, what you've been using to authenticate and uh, be authorized access uh, within a Windows environment, uh, it is uh, it is more of a mesh type of configuration. You have group policies, you have different forests and domains that are all meshed together. Uh, Azure Active Directory is single single domain. You know, it is uh, you know it. It is a single identity source of you for users, groups, and devices. So very, very flat from that standpoint. Uh, there is ways to integrate the two. There's Azure AD Connect. So if you already have, if you have a hybrid infrastructure, you can still synchronize your users and groups to uh, Azure Active Directory and give them that single sign-on experience. Uh, the other one is Azure ADDS, which is really just emulating the on-premises Active Directory domain service within an Azure platform. Uh, but it is, again, outside of Azure Active Directory. If you're using uh, like uh, Microsoft 365 and uh, and other cloud identities, you still have Azure Active Directory as part of your tenant, and you actually still would use Azure Active Directory Connect to synchronize to Azure ADDS. So, uh, so keep that in mind if you if you do want to have your Active Directory, your Windows Active Directory, uh, on on the Azure platform, uh, to you're going to have full single sign-on experience and full integration uh, with uh, with your cloud identities. You're going to still need to use Azure AD Connect as the as the synchronization source between uh, between Azure Active Directory and on-premises ADDS, as well as Azure ADDS. Thank you very much for uh, that condensed down <laughs> <laughs> explanation between those three. So I believe that's uh, going to be very helpful. All right, so in wrapping up, uh, do you want to leave us with some tips uh, that can help us better secure our Azure cloud environment? Uh, first theme, uh, and, uh, and this was stated at Ignite, uh, you know, is it begins and ends with, uh, with multi-factor authentication. If you're not utilizing multi-factor authentication, turn it on. Um, there is nothing that first and foremost, the best thing to protect your identities and protect against an identity attack is having multi-factor authentication throughout all your users, at a minimum, your administrators or anybody that has any kind of administrative uh, authorization should, uh, you know, definitely needs to have multi-factor authentication, but I recommend it across all users in your environment. Thank you so much. So you've heard it from doing today. Thank you very much for your time and uh, for spending time with us on today's episode of the Tech Talk. Uh, so this is what we have for you today on today's episode. Uh, so if you would like to have a rewatch of this, of course, and uh, some other previous episodes, you can do that on YouTube. So it's the Tech Talk uh, with Kazim on YouTube. So uh, on that note, uh, it's a bye-bye from myself now, Adrian, and uh, let's do this again another time. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, Kazim. Great to yeah. be on, on your Tech Talk. <laughs> have a great day. Thank you.